pleasure to have you all here. Uh, enjoying tonight, enjoying the, the, the expertise and craft beer. Uh, Chicago is a special place for the industry, and it's a special privilege and honor to have the opportunity to introduce the panel tonight, which um, I'm going to leave to Mr. Pete Crowley, who's been instrumental in tonight's success, and there's been a lot of people tonight who have helped make tonight um, what it is, what it will be for everyone in this room, and the room next door, uh, and those people will be joining us shortly. So I was, uh, I was very excited when, when Todd came to me uh, with this idea because I, I thought it would be neat to get uh, this diverse of a group of, of business owners and, and brewery owners uh, in one room. Um, but I think it's pretty cool because we've got everything from startup brewers all the way to uh, long-term large brewery owners, so it's a pretty cool panel. We opened up two years ago. Uh, I've been in the brewing scene in Chicago for about 13 years, and uh, it's going pretty well. So we're two years old, and we did 1,500 barrels of total production last year in our little pub. So, um, but I'm really excited to be here. I'm um, also president of the Illinois Craft Brewers Guild, and as Todd had mentioned, um, our industry is, is pretty special. Uh, we're not competing against each other. We're all on one big team. There's not many industries out there that would go to their competitor and borrow ingredients or ask for help or etc. So we all help each other promote um, our products and I think this panel and when you go in the other room you'll see um, that that's very evident. So. My name is Andres. Uh, this is John. He's our brewmaster over at Five Rabbit. Uh, we are a Latin inspired microbrewery. So basically all our beers we make, they're inspired in Latin America in some way or another. White beer. Um, right after college, I started working at a brewery. Not because I, for any particular reason, but that, that was kind of the job. I got it, that's that economy. <laughs> and it was a great opportunity, and I really liked it. I just can't realize that, you know, the beer industry is just a lot more fun than most of the other industries. <laughs> uh, challenges, I think, um, you know, we started with a concept that was a little bit different. Uh, not really proven where it's where you know making beer not based on styles but based on a culture, uh, many different points of inspiration, uh, where you can't really be very specific about what your you know styles of beer are because they don't really fit into many styles. So it, you know it was a concept that was unproven, um, and so just being able to uh, prove that concept and get a track record going because that in paper then opens up many different worlds that are really important, like the world of financing or the world of just getting investors coming in. So I think that was, that was a challenge. Uh, Goose Island began in 1988, and as many of you know, was purchased by Anheuser Bush uh, about two years ago now. It made about 135,000 barrels a year last year out of, out of uh, our Clyborn Pub, we're making a lot less now because we shifted our emphasis to our, our very special beers. We're about to uh, release bottles to uh, all 50 U.S. states in about uh, nine days. So, uh, uh, wine beer. Uh, I love making things when I was a kid, and I made beer and wine. Wine first in my closet basement room when I was 16 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it gets in your blood. And you, You know, my biggest challenge was not getting fired at my first job. <laughs> I, uh, I spilled, uh, at the first job I had, we had open fermenters, and I uh, top, we top dropped the yeast, which means that we pulled the yeast off the top of the fermentation and put it in a bucket and then reused it. And uh, about two weeks into the job, I tipped the bucket of this precious yeast on top of my boss's head. <laughs> yeah, Pete mentioned the, the diversity of, of brewers here on, on, the, uh, on the panel, and we're much different than, than uh, Brett with Goose Island. We're not even open yet. We, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which is a different point of view. For You're so, in zero states. <laughs> we're, we're in zero states. Uh, <laughs> produce zero barrels of beer. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna go but up. <laughs> That's right. Well, we've got uh, pretty modest goals compared to, uh, to a Goose. You know, we're looking at more like 1,500 barrels, uh, um, we're going to be in Lyons, Illinois. We're looking at August as a, as a startup date. And just I'm looking forward to, uh, to fielding any questions about 
kind of what it's like to try to start up and what kind of hurdles uh, a small local brewer goes through. <laughs> really the biggest challenge we have right now is uh, equipment is very hard to come by. Uh, lead times are, are extremely long. You know, that's, that's really the biggest part of our, uh, our timeline getting uh, set up is just that you've got to wait six to seven months to get new systems. And that's just uh, reflective of the, the demand and the growth that craft beer has seen over the last several uh, years. Well, beer, I've really just uh, I've fallen in love with everything that, that craft beer means. I mean, the opportunity to use the best ingredients, a slower process, one that's, you know, doesn't have uh, every single bit of uh, joy squeezed out of it for the sake of efficiency, is really something that, that appeals to me. You know, talking about uh, the slow food movement that's going on, where people are, are more interested in, in crafting products that can come from a local supplier that they can get behind and they can feel good about. It's really something that's, that's appealed to me quite a bit, so. The one big difference probably for me and everybody else here on the panel um, is, is they've all entered the brewing business from their love of beer. I entered it from my love of business. Why I got into beer? Well, to start with, <clears throat> I absolutely love alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol. I'm thankful that my grandfather taught me. Beer specifically, well, the problem is, is I really like port wine, and I couldn't afford to have a vineyard and a distillery to make my own fortified wine. I could, however, afford a brewery, so that's why I got into beer. Uh, as far as my biggest challenge, really, it was paperwork. Um, I found that the construction, and you know, I was 11 years ago, so it wasn't quite as you know intense with equipment right now. So getting the equipment, finding construction. Getting all of those issues, those were just easy to solve the problems. It was working through the paper system with the city, the state, and the federal government that was my biggest challenge. Again, little different angle into the scene. Uh, I was a home brewer for 18, 19 years, and uh, after corporate decided they didn't want me around anymore a few times, I decided it was time to be my own boss and do what I love. So. I'm uh, trying to keep it myself, not going out for investment. Uh, that was the biggest challenge um, going forward. Uh, it just the toll it does take on your personal life, uh, but it's well worth it. Uh, I basically, yeah, I judged home group competitions for 12 years. I organized them. Uh, that's kind of what I had passion for. I read about beer history, beer culture. That's what I did my three times. So it made sense when I decided I wanted to be my boss, I wanted to have a business, what I was going to do. It was pretty obvious to me. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it is a great industry, as Pete said. Um, you know, it, it beats HR going to conferences. Um, you know, it, it's amazing uh, the people and, and what you do and, and the fun we get to have. So that, that's the best part about it. Our brewery, we make beer and send out to the world. The world being the Chicago land, all Chicago land. <laughs> <laughs> we have a store we sell here to go solely, and then we have a tap room at that place. Production um, issues this year, we have about 15,000 barrels. Um, at, our, at our brewery, we're uh, fortunate to work with you know, PhD scientists and uh, engineers and people that flock to the world um, to me, uh, part of the romance of craft beers, home brewing, back in the days of microbrewing, has always been the names that have been bestowed upon the different beers. Um, I'd love to hear all the stories, but could maybe two or three of you just comment on where you might draw inspiration from, if there's themes or people or other um, sources for the names either of your beers or maybe even for the brewery? There. I hate to hog the mic, but I gotta talk to this one. I love it. I got to name a, a beer after my dad tonight. So uh, there's a there's a beer called Marvin Porter out there. Uh, so it's named after <laughs> my father, Marvin. Uh, my question for you is about the intersection of the art, the science, the scale of, of brewing. There's a good bit. There's a whole lot of science. A whole lot of science, but there's a lot more art to it. The science of brewing has been around for a couple hundred years. Brewing has been around for 12,000 years. We're artists first. The intimacy of the setting will just carry on to the next round.
Gentlemen will be here if you have more questions. I encourage you to say hi and ask some questions. Thank you very much.